Welcome everybody uh, to this new tutorial. Today uh, in this tutorial we will try together to uh, set up the clock for uh, our STM32 uh, microcontroller. We'll try to set up the uh, system core clock and uh, the buses. Uh, so in this tutorial I will use uh, the uh, STM32 F4 discovery board which contains STM32 F4 07 VGT6 microcontroller. So uh, if you have another board or uh, another microcontroller, don't panic, just follow the steps and instruction in this tutorial and uh, download your appropriate file and document for your microcontroller. So uh, this tutorial is divided uh, in three parts. The first part, uh, which is uh, this one, we'll try to make an introduction uh, for uh, the STM32 uh, uh, clocks. In the second part, we'll try to write our code uh, in order uh, to set up the clocks in the final part third one we will try to uh, display in real time the uh, value of the frequency uh, using the uh, STM studio real-time debugger so uh, stay tuned Welcome to this uh, first part of this tutorial, which I will make an introduction uh, for uh, the STM32 uh, microcontroller clock. So, uh, as you know, any uh, digital uh, processor or microcontroller needs a continuous series of pulses for him to work. These uh, pulses are called the clock and are derived from an oscillator. So, as you know, um, the microprocessor of your desktop or your laptop uh, is running at a certain frequency. So if you're going to buy a new microprocessor, you will choose the microprocessor who have the uh, higher frequency and, of course, a better uh, architecture. If you have, uh, of course, the uh, the money for that, the DDRAM needs a clock to work. The uh, GPU, the microprocessor of your graphic card, need a clock. Um, the microprocessor of your phone need a clock also. So everything, uh, every digital processor or microcontroller need a clock for him to work. So the clock help all the part of the microcontroller to work together. So uh, the, the waveform of uh, the clock is generally square signal with a rising and a falling edge. Uh, and uh, the waveform it can be also uh, any different uh, waveform like sawtooth etc. So the most common one is still the uh, square signal. So let's go here uh, to this example here and um, as you can see here we have uh, in the left uh, our uh, C code here in, in the right uh, our uh, assembly code here. So as you know uh, during the compiling and uh, building, uh, building of your project uh, your uh, compiler will translate your C code uh, to an assembly code here. So uh, the assembly code is uh, interchangeable by uh, your microcontroller. So as you can see here, this instruction here, move, BL, subtract, etc, etc. So uh, every instruction can take uh, one or more cycle, all depend on the instruction itself. So let's go here to uh, the ARM website here and uh, inside the uh, Cortex M4 technical reference manual here and uh, here we have uh, a table the Cortex M4 instruction uh, set summary here we have all uh, the uh, assembly instruction for example the move as you can see here uh, take one cycle the addition take one cycle the subtract take one cycle the multiply take one cycle the multiply accumulate here uh, take uh, two cycle so uh, uh, one cycle is equal to one divided by uh, your clock uh, system core clock frequency for example uh, we are using the uh, uh, STM32 F4 discovery board which contain STM407 VGT6 microcontroller this microcontroller his, uh, uh, his maximum frequency is 168 megahertz which means 168 million pulses per second. So uh, one cycle is equal one divided by 
168 million is equal to 5.95 so the move instruction take five point normally five point uh, point ninety five nanosecond for example the new generation of cortex m7 the stm32 f7 uh, 756 for example is running uh, at 200 megahertz so uh, every um, so one cycle uh, is take uh, five nanosecond so uh, the faster is the clock the more session you can execute uh, in one second so uh, the uh, SCM32 microcontroller have uh, two clock sources an internal clock sources and uh, an external uh, clock sources so the uh, for the external clock sources we use a crystal clock uh, as you can see here on the screen the uh, crystal clock for the STM F4 discovery board uh, which is running at uh, 8 uh, megahertz so according to the data sheet for the microcontroller the uh, external crystal clock should be between 4 to 26 uh, megahertz and the second uh, source is the internal 16 megahertz RC oscillator so you may ask yourself uh, right now uh, two question the first uh, question you may ask why would you use an external clock if uh, the STM microcontroller have its own internal uh, 16 uh, RC oscillator uh, so the answer is that uh, the internal clock is less accurate than uh, the external crystal clock so according to the data sheet the 16 uh, and uh, 16 megahertz uh, internal clock is 1% accuracy which means for uh, for 16 megahertz OC clock which equal to 16 uh, million persons per second we have 100 uh, 160,000 uh, pulses more or less in every second this is equal to an error of 14.4 uh, minutes per day so comparing this to an external clock which uh, frequency stability is generally between 100 to uh, between 10 to 100 ppm ppm is uh, part per million and uh, is like percent but uh, per million instead so let's start uh, with the uh, crystal clock, uh, external clock, uh, uh, with the frequency stability uh, equal to 100 ppm, and we suppose uh, we have the f the, f uh, the external crystal clock have uh, the same frequency as the internal, which is uh, 16 uh, megahertz. So uh, the error every uh, second is equal to one uh, 1,600 uh, pulses. Uh, in every second uh, this equal to an error of 8.64 uh, uh, second per day and uh, for a crystal clock uh, which maximum with uh, frequency stability is uh, about uh, 10 ppm the error will be uh, 160 uh, pulses more or less in every second and uh, an error uh, and uh, we have an error about 0 0.86 second per day so we suppose there's no variation and the temperature and the capacitor load are correct for the external crystal clock so as you can see the uh, crystal is about 100 to 1000 time accurate than the uh, internal RC oscillator so let's go here uh, to uh, the DigiKey let's take a look at the DigiKey DigiKey is one of the uh, biggest uh, electronic component supplier so let's take a look here uh, looking for the uh, crystal crystal here and uh, we check we go to this crystal and let, let's take a look here as you can see here the frequency stability is uh, 100 ppm 10 ppm 11 ppm 120 etc but the majority are between 10 to 100 ppm for example as you can see here the frequency stability here uh, the uh, SMD uh, surface mount uh, component uh, crystal as you can see there's a through hole component also as you can see here uh, the frequency stability is 15 uh, 50 ppm as you can see here now uh, there's a more accurate uh, accurate uh, oscillator called TCXO 
temperature compensate external oscillator the average is between 1 ppm this is uh, more accurate than uh, the normal crystal as you can see here the frequency stability is about 3 uh, 0 0.30 ppm 1.5 etc 0.5 so for example this one is uh, the first one the uh, frequency stability is about 2 ppm so for example the uh, uh, the raspberry pi use this uh, tcxo 90.2 megahertz so this tcxo 90.2 megahertz so uh, the frequency stability is about 2.5 ppm. The Raspberry Pi is a well-known uh, embedded tiny computer which include uh, an uh, ARM processor. So uh, let's take a look and there's um, also a more accurate one, a crystal called OCXO, Oven Controlled External Crystal Oscillator. So this one is uh, the frequency stability is uh, more more accurate than the previous one is about zero as you can see here 0 0.1 ppb and uh, we talk here uh, with ppb ppb is part per billion is more accurate so uh, so in conclusion uh, of this question uh, so if you will use a critical peripheral like ethernet usb which apply an accurate frequency you have to use the external clock Otherwise, if the time is not so important in your application, you can just use in the internal RC clock. So the second question you may ask is, how can we reach the uh, maximum frequency, which is equal to 168, 168 megahertz for uh, our uh, microcontroller, uh, which is uh, the STM32F407VGT6 microcontroller. Uh, how can we reach this maximum frequency uh, which uh, which the maximum frequency for the external clock is 26 megahertz and the internal oscillator is about 16 uh, megahertz so the answer is uh, is using the internal PLL phase look at loop uh, it's aim to multiply the frequency in order to reach the maximum desired one which is 168 168 megahertz in our case so before uh, moving uh, to uh, the uh, second part uh, so let's uh, download uh, our uh, data sheet uh, so uh, open a new page here and uh, the first thing you have to know your uh, the name of your uh, development board so in our case my uh, development board is the discovery of the STM32F4 discovery board here. So we Google it here and we open the first link. And here in the key feature here, uh, there's uh, everything in your board. For example, the LED, the digital microphone, etc. The first one is uh, your uh, microcontroller's name so uh, our case in our microcontroller is the stm32 f407 vgt6 so we copy this and uh, we uh, paste it right here and we google it and uh, here we open the first link and we select all here and uh, we download this file the data sheet so waiting for it okay it's take a little bit of time so we go to uh, the normally we go to the page 18 I don't know maybe uh, this will change in uh, the next version but the page 18 here the device overview the STM F4 O a block diagram so here you're gonna understand everything and I will see you I will show you in the uh, second part here so uh, the second one we go back here data sheet here we need uh, a file here a document for the clock I don't know where it is but we we search for it we put clock here and we 
this one clock configuration tool for STM for etc etc so we open it here and uh, we download this document the clock configuration tool so here uh, a useful one uh, a useful document to understand uh, more how uh, to manage the uh, clock here's a uh, schematic clock schematic and we're gonna need uh, this uh, this table for uh, the flash latency we will see this in the, the uh, second part so uh, if you have another board for example uh, just uh, write the uh, board's name for example the STM 32F429 discovery this one for example as you know this with the big uh, big, big screen so we open uh, the first link and then uh, we looking for the microcontroller name here we copy this microcontroller and we paste here and we open the first link then uh, we uh, open the uh, data sheet we go to page 18 the same as the previous one and we zoom in this is the block diagram for the stm 32 f 427 here normally the same thing but there's some changes the maximum frequency is 180 180 etc more flash etc so uh, that's all for uh, this part if uh, this tutorial was interesting uh, please uh, push the like button and uh, subscribe and if you want to have this channel uh, there's a link in the video description below and uh, if you want to see the second part of this tutorial click in the right top corner see you there